welcome to another unboxing video for the Scene World channel. As you can see, I've opened the box and moved some packaging to speed up the video. But we'll dive straight in. This package has come all the way from Poland. And inside we have a pre gearing and two cartridge boxes. So, first up we have the Resurrection Collection from Bobar Games. So, Five games that differ in both genre and style, still all of them something in common. All of them crafted with love and care. All of them already released by Commodore and Amiga. Magazine, the Polish Commodore magazine, which also published in English. All of them are already sold out. Let's bring them back to life in your Commodore once again. So we have Fire Breath, Little Knight Arthur, Digiloy, Fort Django, and Tower of Rubble 64. So let's open up and have a look inside. So there's the nice looking cartridge. It also includes there we go, a label on the back and in the box we have a sticker which I've just dropped on the floor and as I can see now I've opened, there is a small reset button built into the cartridge as well for convenience we have a World War Games sticker a very nice Tower of Rubble 64 uh, postcard with uh, ways you can die in the game and then the resurrection collection manual how to use the cartridge thanks for purchasing the product instructions for fire breath little knight arthur digiloy is a very interesting game all Done in Petski, Django, Hot Django, another Petski game. Tower Rubble 64. If you've not played this yet, blocks of rubble fall from the sky. You control the little man. You can uh, jump across a single gap or hang off a block and do a double jump. That's included in, in the tutorial on the screen in the game and finally cover picture by Jan Lorette from the tape release of Fire Breath and Little Night Arthur Yukash Bobrecki designed and produced cartridge handcrafted by David Bacek cartridge hardware based on schematics by Zorka Zionov and Marco Solyash cartridge binaries created with software by Andy Ashton cover picture by J graphics, stevenart.com slash J graphics, friends in the media, 364, RGN, Canada Plus, and ways you can find Boba on the internet. So that's part one of the package. Part two of the package is the single button game selection, double size, also from Boba Games. I should have done that as well, shouldn't I? There you go. Resurrection Games, Commodore 64. So, single button cartridge games collection on a single cartridge. Both single button games collections together on one cartridge. How cool is that? You can just plug the button, stick in the cartridge, and have a nice little party with games easy to learn but quite hard to master. So, on the left, we have Invader, Captain Cloudbury, City Bomber 4K, Fire to Jump, Sheep is a Key. Flappy Bird, Trump Tower, Flapper, Wave Hero, and Pixel City Skater. It's all games that can be controlled with a single button. And once again, we have the, the cartridge, the built in reset button, a list of the games. And there's one to nine there. A little Bobar game sticker. This time we have a an upside down single games collection cartridge postcard and there's the games on the on the first collection the manual for the double size how to use the cartridge thank you for purchasing and highway hoppers basic 10 liner expand explain so this is another nice thing they've done with the single games button collection as well there is a listing 
and this is an expanded version of Oliver 10 line program and it tells you what it does. So then we have Invader by Darren Folds, City Bomber 4K by Doxter and Rotoroy from Megastyle, Sheep is a Key, Michael Fumato, Federico Celsa and Michael Lazurman, Trump Tower by Doxter DMX Rotoroy from Megastyle, Captain Cloudberry Episode 4 Helium, Doxter Rotoroy, and FX from Megastyle, Wave Hero by Gersh Drama, you may know that from the 4K competition, Fire to Jump, Game Code Ron and Martin, Music Frederick and Volk, Software of Sweden, Flapper, Gog, Lonsteiner, Puppy Bird, based on Dong Nieng's incredible best selling app, Seasip World Conversion by SOS, Software of Sweden, Pixel City Skater, Mid64, music by Gaetano Giorno, that's one of my favourite uh, single button games around. The original artwork from the, the first tape release, which I reviewed for Scene World, and released, designed, and produced by Lukas Bobrecki. Cartridge handcrafted by David Acek. Cartridge hardware based on schematics by Sarko Zivanov and Marco Salashish. Binaries created with software by Andy Astaturn, cover picture by Jan Lorick, Friends of Media, and once again, how to find Bo on the internet. So, unfortunately, I don't currently have access to my C64 hardware, so I can't run the games for you. Uh, you can see some of them in my previous uh, single button collection gameplay video on the Signal channel, and I hope I can add some gameplay videos for you to this soon. But for the now, keep watching the Scene World channel for new more reviews, news, interviews and unboxing. Jörg has recorded video footage of the Resurrection and Single Button cartridge compilations. So we'll start off with the first game, number one, Fire Breath on the Resurrection cartridge. Here's the title screen, and then you get an introduction to the various characters and enemies in the game. And so the name Fire Breath gives you a clue as to how you're going to actually tackle the enemies. Jörg did say to me that uh, he sucked when he played this games for the recording, but we shall see as you go along. And there we have your character, Dozo. And you see this is actually from 1987. So we start and we jump down the well and the enemies move down the screen and go off the bottom and you can do the same, you can jump between platforms and once you've killed an enemy you can collect the jewels they leave behind for extra points. And you mustn't hit the enemies or fall into the water. And here we go, there's the other, there's an extra power up there that appears, they appear randomly. And so, as you can see, enemies fall off the bottom of the screen, you fall off the bottom of the screen in that round two. And that's the water. Pick that up, those points. There's a power up there. Can you pick it up? Yes, there we go. You start off with four lives. Shown at the bottom right. And unfortunately, he's been hit again. There's the jewel and the power up. That one makes you run faster. And on to level three. So you can see the level layout's changed. Uh, different enemies at later levels. I'm not sure what the gun does, but 
you know, crowding the slime. And now you can see the enemies aren't actually going to be able to get out of the situation. Game over. Game number two on the resurrection cart. Little Knight Arthur. Another resurrected game. Nice title screen. And so that's the character you control. Message. Now this is a very tricky game. I haven't got past round one myself, so and there you can see there are various icons around the screen. I'm guessing we have to get to the shield down there. There's a, a, a cup, a grail there. And there are lots of spiders trying to kill you. This is a very tricky jump. You have to run left and jump at the same time to get up onto that platform. And then run into the spider. remaining. Yeah, I needed to jump left again there to get over that next spider. It's all about the timing. One life left. again. Game three on the resurrection cartridge. Digiloy by Dr. Terrors, 2018. New title screen in front. And this is a game made entirely in Petski with some huge characters. The basic idea of the game is to find the free disks to shut down the computer defense system on the planet. You can find extra ammunition and energy. Battery strikes bottom right, go through the door, his enemies are dropping on you. Taking a hit there, taking a hit. Time where you can blast them. So there are several types of enemy. I believe it's about 25 screens. Good shot, Jörg. Let's 
so that's a tricky jump. Characters and fluid moving nicely into some background. And it's a clever use of pet ski graphics. Just a shame there isn't more to the game. See online over the score from the Zap Manual reviewers, one of which was myself and as with as we'll see in a minute before Django, which also uses Petsky, came in for some similar criticism in that while the graphics are a nice idea, a good attempt of trying something different, there isn't quite enough variety in the game. Yeah. I'm just you know, getting frustrated here. Shooting the platforms. Ah, you got it over there. Okay. So more than one type of enemy. Game number four on the resurrection cart, the aforementioned Fort Django from Dr. Terrors. Put the map screen in front. And as you can see, there's choice music and sound effects and two different maps. This is map one. Map two has more detailed graphics. And the basic idea is you are running around Fort Django where a group of bandits have stashed all their money. Yeah, just took a hit there when you Character flash red, and there's a money bag. And he's counting up at the bottom of the screen. And there's a large map, all drawn in pet ski graphics. And another twist on map two is that the enemies are actually slightly more intelligent in that they will also duck. So you're just taking a second hit there. One more hit and then call the game over. So there's twists and turns, dead ends. You can duck under the enemy of our heart. So when you're standing on the platform. Very distinctive expanded sprites, which, while not technically the best. Oh, and that's game over for Jurg, unfortunately. I do quite like the screen fade effect. So, the last game on the Resurrection Cartridge, number five, Tower of Rubble 64, based on a PC game that was entered into a CGA game jam. So the idea being that you use CJ colours and limited resolution. And as you can see, blocks are falling from the sky, or crumbling into the sea. And you can climb up a block, you can jump across. 
Thunder Box and one block and double box I mean two box and now Yog is trapped and crushed. He can be crushed to death, you can be drowned when you fall into the sea, or you can be crushed very quickly. Or you can be hit by the laser which goes across horizontally and clears a whole row of blocks. So I do like the little man the way he animates pounding over. There is another little trick of the you can learn from touch screen on the function keys takes you into the instruction where you can actually control our hero. And from there you can learn a special technique that allows you to jump two squares. Basically you hang off the platform, hang off the edge of a block. And go across. And the other part is the way the falling of the blocks is synchronised with the beat of music. So the sort of rhythm you get into, you feel when the next block is going to drop. It can be a good idea to get height, but you have to work out the way. I mean, you can see the outermost blocks have crumbled into the sea there. And the resurrection cartridge. layout is constantly changing. There's the laser coming in. All blocks on that row, or all blocks. And that's another death. This is the single button cartridge collection of 10 games. The first one here, Invader by Darren Folds. Here's a twist on Space Invaders. Your base is at the bottom. The invader descends very much like the, the uh, player's vehicle in Blitz or City Bomber. And when you press fire to shoot, your base switches direction. So if you're going left, don't move right. If you're going right, move left. And so it'll also bounce off the buffers at either end of the screen. So the aim is to hit the alien invader as it descends the screen and when you do manage a hit you earn the bonus points as shown in the middle at the bottom and the alien is moved back up a level so the higher it is up the screen the more points you get. And as you can see there are also readings on the screen here for the height, the number of the alien, number of aliens remaining. And so it's all about timing your button press. If you can push the alien back up to the top of the screen you get the most points, 500 per hit. And it's a really nice high score game, something you can play as a competition. Game two is City Bomb at 4K. On the Mega Star production, as you can see, there's some options on the title screen for adjusting the difficulty and the speed. Your plane flies backwards and forwards. There's a nice little tune playing, and of course, the aim is to drop the bomb by pressing fire and get rid of the buildings and the trees so you can land safely. It's always a good idea to target the higher buildings first. Score is based.
based on how many blocks of the building or the trees you clear. You start off at level one with just a few buildings to clear and more are added at higher difficulties. If you run into a building or a tree, of course, it's game over. You can't press fire to launch a new bomb until the previous bomb has left the screen. Playing gets on lower. And the timing unfortunately off there. <laughs> Game over. Game number three, also from Megastar, Sheep is a Key. Apologies, this is Trump Tower from Megastyle. Entered into the Reset 4K competition. And a satirical game about a certain businessman who went into politics. So, the aim of the game is to run along the corridors, see some credits here on the top screen, and avoid the obstacles. You just press button to fire, no button. press the fire button to jump, have to work out where he jumps so it gets more complicated, collect the gold coins for extra points, avoid the spikes on the ceiling, yeah, try it again. You see it also changes which direction you run in from the coin there. So you need to jump there. There we go, you got through that. So now we've got a longer jump. And it gradually gets more difficult as you get further into the game. You need to grab the cap as well. Screens. The more floors you make it through, the harder it gets. Great piece of music running in the background. British and American viewers know it as the theme from The Benny Hill Show. So this is entered into the recent 4K competition. Well, it's quite a simple game. It is quite addictive. I've scored 32 so far, see if you can beat that.
Next up on the single button cartridge collection is Sheep is a Key, Raphael Formato. For a while this was thought to be just a preview, but it's actually a finished game. Partially based on the original Daredevil Dennis, and perhaps inspired by Simon Pick's later app, Flipping Sheep, where you control the sheep jumping over obstacles. I do like that. So the whole point is to time your run, you jump automatically when you press fire, you need to jump over the obstacles, you start off with 9 lives, and there are 10 levels to beat, and that is the only problem there, if you press fire and hit an obstacle you can still be jumping when you start again, and game over. So game number five is Wave Hero, Geostrama, you control a jet ski, you hold fire to dive, let go of fire to jump, and the aim is to avoid the rocks, so you need to press down and hold, and then you can jump over, press and hold, jump over, and as you get further the obstacles get tougher and the scrolling moves faster. So it's another 4K game, another single K single button game in 4K. And the wave effect is very clever. And the animation of your guy on the jet ski. Your guy, your girl on the jet ski, I'm not sure which is clever. And once you get used to the timing quite a long way. Clouds zooming by. Seaweed and starfish on the rocks. Splash of the water as you land. I see this. Other obstacles are shorter rocks there. So this is one I really enjoyed in the 4K competition reset magazine. It's perfect suited to single button controller Sabuga. So game six to ten, six seven eight nine zero, were on the original single button games tape. Start with Captain Cloudberry, another Mega Style title. The Mega Style intro, obviously inspired by the old Melbourne House logo. Bitmap intro screen here, Captain Cloudbury, which I think I mentioned in my video of the single button collection. I was actually drawn on an iPad app and spans created for drawing C64 bitmaps. So a very nice uh, bitmap and I'll be tuned. Control Captain Cloudbury in his plane. Unfortunately, his plane has one problem it will only turn clockwise. So, when you press and hold the fire button, your plane will start to turn. I do like that little effect with the plane going behind the cloud there. Changing the sprite priority. So, episode 4 helium. Press fire to start. It's the score table. Number 1. So, when you press fire, press on fire 
why you stuck to that. And the aim at the moment is to try and collect, collect the flashing balloon as a bonus point. So, yeah, to collect all the balloons and avoid the clouds. Later levels actually add a thunderstorm. The trick there is the thunderstorm actually reverses the direction you turn in. So you have to get used to the turning circle. And of course, you're constantly using fuel, and when you run out of fuel, it's game over. Sorry, you did not reach the Hall of Fame. So yeah, I'm just going to go back and try again. You see, if you collect a balloon out of sequence, you lose the flashing sequence. So, two balloons left. Complete level one. Plenty of fuel to spare. A bonus for fuel left. And move on to level two. And unfortunately, you get cloud straight as we start there. So. See, this can be quite tricky until you grasp the controls. There's another clue there to how you can complete certain levels in that the screen wraps around left and right, up and down. And while the collision detection is very tight, once you get used to it, it's fair and you know exactly what to expect when you get near the clouds, so yeah, it's nearly out of fuel here on level 2. Game 7 on the single button games collection cartridge is Fire to Jump from Software of Sweden. We have a nice intro featuring Amiga style check and balls. Clever. DYCP scroller and a reverse DYCP scroller. So that's the intro. Let's a bitmap. And then into the game itself, press fire to start and press fire to jump. Two jumps on level two. Jump past, you have to get close and jump at the right time. Here you have to jump on land before you hit the next block. Three jumps to get right in time, so the time is constantly just decreasing. Get in and escape with a jump, jump, jump. You miss time. First jump. You don't have trouble with the next two. And much like sheep is a key. Start a jump, you'll continue to do the jump when the next time starts. Yes, there's a surprise on level 9. Block up here, so now we've got two blocks to get over. So you've got time the first jump right, and then time the second jump right to get close to the first one. Get that second jump accurate. 
very fine margin. Game over. Next game is Flapper, another one inspired by an online flash game, an online web game. You control a helicopter flying through a scrolling cavern. You press fire to gain altitude. But if you hit any of the background blocks, it's game over. And the aim then, of course, is to fly as far as you can through the cavern. You get told how far you've flown, just based on the number of character blocks, obviously. Scrolls. So this is quite a fun little game. The animation on the main sprite is okay. Just a couple of frames to give the illusion of the rotor blade spinning. The control response is very fair. used to the gravity dragging you down, timing your press so you don't go too high because of course if you hit the roof of the cannon it's as bad as hitting the floor. So the helicopter flies on, this is a good go from New York here, a lot further into it, okay, even more than fall too far, get over that block. So you learn to use gravity to help you. Watch you uh, hit the floor. 2,939 meters. And the final game on this cartridge is Flappy Bird inspired by the mobile phone hit. A little bird flaps along and tries to avoid the pipes. So it's just a case of pressing fire to flap. If you push more than once, you'll go up quickly. You need to, again, you need to learn how to fall as well as how to flap. And as you can see briefly there, on game over, it gives you your total score, shows you the high score, and if you get far enough, you earn little coloured medals which fill in there. And while it's uh, probably best known as a mobile app, there are a couple of games on the C64 inspired by this. Uh, his version of Flappy Bird and there's also a shoot -em up construction kit based on Flappy Bird. So I hope you've been, been enjoying this look through the games on the single button game collection cartridge from Boba Games. Final game to look at is Pixel City Skater from Med64. I quite like the endless run ver option on the title screen there, which actually scrolls obstacles towards you. And 
this then is the main game 60 screens to get through five lives to start with you earn extra lives for reaching certain screens I really like the futuristic looking backdrops five or six different scenes that appear behind the action and it's just a case of pressing fire to jump or skateboard and not running into the platforms so here you now we need to time your jump so you're falling to land on the on the block not hitting the tunnel and holding on jamming far like that is not always effective you drop off there and jump before you get to there else you'll hit your head that's a brief look at pixel city skater another cool 4k 4k, 4K game designed to be played with a single button if you have the single button controller I can definitely recommend this cartridge everyone else you can play it with a standard joystick and just use the button I'm lucky enough to own the controller and uh, the original cassette compilation I decided I'd like to Get this cartridge version as well. It's ideal for showing uh, some recent games with uh, single button control. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Gameplay by Jurg, unboxing and voiceover by Merman. And keep watching the Scene World channel.